this is below spec you need a new discovery right and here we are at 0 0.5 bar so this is below spec we're gonna go to three and a half thousand oh. 1.75 and there we are that's what somebody looks like who needs a new oil pump in this episode, we're going to replace the oil pump on a Land Rover Discovery 4. We continue our, this is not your typical Toyota repair with a 17 millimeter spanner. Hope you enjoy the video. Getting ready for the big job. And here is a patient. Oh. Morning guys. Morning. Hi Vera. Hi. Hi. I'm already stressed from looking at it. Hey, you got those nicely powered. Oh yeah, he power coated the rims. It's that uh, is looking sweet, and it's like a like mat with a, yeah. a fine structure. Oh, Max. you get and you got new tires and too. And tires, general grabber. Yes. Cool. In one of our previous videos, we replaced step by step the oil pump on a Land Rover Discovery 3 2006. If you want to know how that works, go check out that video. It's very detailed, very easy to follow. On a Land Rover Discovery 4, it's a whole new ball game. There are a couple of things different, mainly because of the secondary turbo on this side and a lot more crap in the engine compartment. So let's see how that works out. I put the car in neutral, not in park, and I close the parking brake. I don't want to put it into gear. If you do this on ground, you later on need to rotate the engine and that won't work if you have it in gear. And we get rid of most of the stuff inside the engine compartment here. First step is we disconnect the battery. Second step is to get the right socket because it's a Discovery 4. I am not so familiar with a Discovery 4. Yeah, because I was never broke. Because I was never broke. The majority of the work takes place up here. What we got to do underneath the car is remove the starter motor. Once we got the coolant out, we take out what we can up here. Then we're going to go downstairs. Uh, actually, we're going to raise it up. We got a lift now. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna take the starter motor up. Okay, now I'm getting the first comments why I'm lying down when I got a two post lift and it only takes two seconds to lay down. It's all about efficiency, guys. We're not here in a Toyota workshop. Yeah, it's always a big mess. I got that on camera. <laughs> we should do that in a time lapse. Taking this intake plastic out. Got all sorts of stuff. What is useless. <laughs> so we're gonna make a lot of room in here. Um, you can get away without taking all the stuff out. It's also a good idea because you're loosening them and you put them back together um, and the potential is that you find another problem, that you cure a secondary problem introduced at Land Rover. <laughs> So it's open. Yeah. Point of no return. Well, the oil cooler runs coolant. Oh, runs coolant, so the oil... Oh, I learned something new every single time we're doing a job. Aha! What are you doing, Christian? I told you. He is removing the bypass valve of the turbocharger. Correct. Oh my god, how are we ever going to get that back together again? Well, it's somebody else's car, so yeah. this is not really a big problem. No, so it's a guinea pig for our mall crawler. Using our new tool, I'm all excited. So, bolt number two from the turbocharger. Yeah. Oh my god, look at that rotten bolt. It has to come off too. I'm the oil cooler for excess only, so I can let it dangle here on the hoses. I don't need to disconnect the transmission hoses itself. Taking off a bunch of hoses, removing a bunch of clips. And not knowing a damn thing what we're actually doing here. It's not a Toyota. Though so that is trench number 25. Yes, and always on me. Why not on you? Ah. Now the next step is to take out two bolts down here, which I have to locate first. Ah, I see them. You should wear a raincoat. That's a 10 millimeter Ratcheting spanner, job. A ratcheting spanner. What is a ratcheting spanner? It's a ratcheting spanner. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. I'm not going to cut that out. <laughs> yeah. no, everybody will know you didn't know what a ratcheting spanner <laughs> looks like. Yes. Perfect. So the fan shroud on the Discovery 3, I take about, I would say, 
15 minutes max and it's out including cooling fan and here it's already 11 o'clock and we started at 9. There's in irgendwelche clips. We still have to get the starter engine out, the yeah, starter motor. Been, we're not there yet, we're trying to get the cooling shroud. Oh, we're still in the cooling system. Oh, oh man. Goodness. I'm gonna use an anti-Toyota setup. Oh my God. Also wheel spacers. You might as well buy new intercooler hoses because now is a perfect time to change the lower two ones. After 15 minutes, he realized he's got the wrong socket. <laughs> Don't say things like that. <laughs> it's completely out of context, okay? There are two occasions in life where you have to work by feel. That's in the bedroom and on a Land Rover. This is the object of desire. That is the turbocharger bypass with mounting bracket. Now we are done with the work below the car for now. We have to come back. Christian loves his new tool. So by the time you are done taking off the cooling shroud, you might as well have taken the body off. Marking your stuff. Oh, it's half out. We are never ever going to get that back in no, again. We're not going to get that back in. <laughs> Drain number 27 <laughs> just happened. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. This took three and a half hours and it's 15 minutes on the Discovery 3. Oh my God. Now, look at that. Now we got a few at the engine like we have it on yours after 15 minutes. That is 15 minutes on my car. That is unbelievable. The butterfly intake, which is relatively easy as we had this out before on this car. Yeah, we, a, I don't have that. That's a vacuum chamber, you don't have that. All this useless stuff here out of the way, this is all emission crap. Oh, he has everything he needs to open those damn hose clamps. Let's try <laughs> if, if they really work. I never <laughs> used them, okay? Oh, <laughs> I didn't know I have that tongue, okay? So there. Uh, Why is it not coming off? Mark your <laughs> direction of rotation. <laughs> Better protect the radiator. Get some tape or something. So what's that named? Crankshaft. Crankshaft pulley. It needed a little bit of perspiration. Say, say the name. Serpentine belt tension. We are ready to take the cover off. So they are 16 bolts, I, I think. think. 14. 14? Okay. Oh my god. Mm. I check here for leaks. Yeah. Th this could be something else. And I check here. So there's no oil leak on the camshaft, which is good. We call it the alternator. Land Rover calls it the generator. It's not you didn't tell me that I got a new tool. Ah. Oh. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mechanical orgasm. Yes. Okay, now the alternator. Oh my god, I almost missed that. Has two connections, one electronic one and one lug. Oh. Okay. So tell me if it's coming. <laughs> I always tell you if it's coming. Now it's coming. <laughs> oh. It is hard surgery after all. To remove a little heat shield and then I can get to that 10 millimeter there. Oh my god. Oh, that thing took half an hour. We're kind of done having the car slip around on the two post lift um, on these rubber pads because we had it slide off on one side again at least an inch and uh, we're gonna just uh, put an end to that. So there must be a bolt here now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. because Christian dropped one. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay, now this is not where the starter motor was mounted. It was mounted over here. And I pulled it all the way forward and out. And that was the first task, the starter motor, which was easier than on the Discovery 3. And what I'm interested in is this hole. And now I can line up the flywheel to this hole. I hope you guys can see that, how it's moving. I hope you guys never have to see that. This is a tool I made. There it is. 
And this now fits nicely and locks the flywheel in place. Got this camshaft locked in position with this pin and see how I can move the pin still? I can Show still it move again. it so it's nicely and loose. And this one, I can at least wiggle it here. I can move it. Yeah. Now what I got to do is loosen the tensioner here. We mark the belt for direction of rotation. I have the pin. I have a new belt, so I would prefer to install a new belt. What? It's oh, okay. Minus money, not mine. I didn't miss a moment. <laughs> belt is only halfway done okay we can keep it as a spare so this is actually an original land rover part mine is a gates and i sent mine back so taking off what is that cooling called um the cooling fan <coughs> oh, i don't okay. know something with cooling van it's only interesting <coughs> for toyota people it's only in the way Look at that beauty yeah. and it's a fomoko at least so nobody has ever touched it our special tool. 375 Newton meters. Ah, no. okay. Now we are using yes. brutal force. Okay. I think it's gonna snap. Oh, oh yes. It's not gonna snap. It's this is an American breaker bar. It's not gonna break. Sorry. Sorry <laughs> I, forgot. I might get hurt in that position. Oh yes. <laughs> Is it broken? No. Yeah, no. it's open. Oh my god. Oh, when oh. Christian says, oh my oh god. My god. <laughs> okay, we're supposed to replace this bolt. And I don't have a new one. <laughs> no. Wow. Look at that. I'm not an oily. So, what's the German word for freezer plug? I've, I always. Froststopfen. Yes. Ah. Läuft die Kamera? Christian yeah. always accuses me of missing the moment. So that's so. it. Now the car can come back down. What are you cleaning? I'm cleaning the area around the oil pump. I don't think we've done that on my car with oh. the crush. Because yours was so clean. Oh, thank God. Yeah. So it's moving. And here. See over here, it's already moving. Yeah. That. It's coming. There's your oil pump. Oh my god. Ooh. Yeah. Claim this one is worn out because the car had low oil pressure. Yeah. And now we install a brand new one and we hope it has that increased oil pressure. If it doesn't, the engine is worn out. It's AB. It's, it's AB, yes. And is that old or new? So it's from 2012. The, the date stamp. 10. It's a 2010, so this is for sure the original pump. And this is now exactly halfway of the repair. Already quarter past three. So from nine until three since six hours. Now I measure the pump rotor size. So it's a 15 millimeter rotor. That's good. And the new one is also a 15 millimeter. This one is an AE and this one is a... It's an AB. AB. So, see, there's the 20 on it. Yeah. This is 10. So, this is definitely the manufacturing date, which means this is the original pump for sure. Yeah. The PSA original. Which has this little um, hologram on it. Ford pump, same one, but only a third of the price. Perfect. Cleaning this with spray cleaner. I put a thin coat of glue on, mainly here in the corner. Okay, but also over the entire surface. Okay, that's good enough, nicely coated. And when I push it on now, I want to make sure the insertion tool stays on all the way until it hits the shoulder of the crankshaft. See, and now how it scoops the insertion tool out. The pump is not primed yet. I'll show you guys later how to prime it without making an oily mess now and getting oil onto your ATV. Oh, okay. Pump is in. These used to have dowel holes. They don't have any dowel holes anymore. See, now it's seated nicely. Not torqued yet. Not torqued, but seated. Put on something on these. 
What do you mean you wonder if you want to put on something? Some lubrication shit. Yeah, I guess it's pretty badly corroded. So talking all the bolts with 10.53 newton meters. That's what I told her. <laughs> okay, that's it. We seat the ceiling ring and then we eat cake. We eat cake from Martin and from... Whistle. Okay. okay. Coming from the Black Forest all the way up here. Now we're going to seat the front crankshaft seal. seal. And this seal gets installed completely dry, no lubrication, and a really hard to open package. Okay, so it's packed like a condom. So this is the tool I made, LR3 front. It fits exactly over the crankshaft here. You can see that. The sealant ring comes with a little funnel. And now what I got to do is push this funnel over it and scoop the sealant ring over the funnel onto the shaft all the way back there. Now I take my special tool and a persuader and now I knock it in and my tool will seat it one millimeter under flush. And you better do it LR time style. Yeah, don't do that Outback Discovery style, okay? Just by eyeballing it. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, <Done>. Ryan. <laughs> but you had the leak. <laughs> if you got a leak after installing a sealing ring, you're going to have to take some abuse. Yeah. That's how it is, no matter if you're hiding in Australia. Especially if you mention us. I know uh, Christian and Vera had a fully sick tool. We set it to exactly one mil. Um, I'm not that flash. That's about one mil. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> and then he had to leak. Yeah, had to do it again. We also had to do it again once because I screwed up my tool. We got to torque the four on the bottom and that's it. 0.35 newton meter just like Vera said. No, I said 10.53. Oh, I got it all confused. Now it's done. Oh, damn, it's so dark down here. Yeah, it's really a problem. Ah. Now it's my age. Maybe. Oh, there's a light here. Hang on. <laughs> we forgot about that light. Done. Okay. Martin's Land Rover Discovery 3. It's a 2008 was 246,000 kilometer and it made it today all the way from the Black Forest up here. So that's even on the map for Toyota drivers. Okay? Yes. That's at least 400, no, at least 300 kilometers in one day without <laughs> breaking down. <laughs> What oil pump Martin has in his 2008 Discovery 3 because I told him if he drives home it can fail and here you can see I'm using my camera see I can move my camera down there and I can see is a 6600 AE so now he can drive home being all relaxed because yeah. the AE is already a new pump because this is a 2008 a 2008 is not guaranteed to have the refurbished oil pump yes this is the tool I used. It's called the Deep Stash cam Camera from Amazon. It's about 25 euros. It's 13. Yeah. So it's a good deal. Mm. Now let's go inside. I show you guys quickly why AE is good. Here's the picture we took. You can clearly see a 6600 AE. And yeah. if you look, a weak pump has the casting number AC. Right here, we got more than enough. You have an AE pump. Yeah. There but you go. See, this is an AE. Because I don't want Martin to go home that relaxed. <laughs> okay. The problem is that the AE pump, when I measure the thickness of the road door, it's only a 13 millimeter pump. Mm -hmm. Versus the latest version pump. This is, for example, the one we took out of um, Reiner's discovery today. It's a 15 millimeter road. Yeah. Between 13 and 15 millimeter, how many percent is that? Well, it's a lot. About 10%. Yeah. You could get 10% more fluid delivery if you put in a newer pump, which I would say is worthwhile for a little weekend project where you're looking for a headache. Especially if you are doing the timing chain soon. Okay. <laughs> now they are putting the 350 newton meters back on. Stage one on the Discovery for 150 newton meter. I don't see anything. Stage, Stage two, two? Is 300 newton meter, which is, in my opinion, already good enough. Top oh top. my God! Stage three is now actually 90 degrees. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna put the torque wrench to 370. That's and below 400. And see how much. And, and we see how many, what angle we get. Yeah, 20 degrees. Wow. Yeah. Let's go a little further. Hold it. Oh. Good enough. 
I'm gonna do 400 newton meters. I'm not okay with that because he's gonna pull something and we have to go to the hospital. And we got our lock pin in the flywheel and we make sure the lock pin is nice and loose and not stuck. And what I do now is I mark this position here to make sure when I later do my tightening procedure that I'm not screwing this up. The first thing is I gotta install this tensioner here again. The idler pulley from the timing belt and we're gonna choose 48 Newton meters. Loosen now the camshaft pulley wheel bolts. And you can see if I put now torque on here, I would actually destroy my pin. So I have to counter hold this by going on here with a socket. So we'll loosen these and Rainer is countering Yes. So we don't break my pin. Yes. And you can see I need this slot for adjusting the timing belt. Ah, okay. Install the belt tensioner. I also gonna Loctite it in. It does have a new bolt from Land Rover because it's a 10.9 and you can see that bolt looks all nice and shiny. The original ones on the Discovery 3 had an 8.8 .8 in the very early models. In order to install the belt tensioner pulley wheel, I have to bring the belt into a fixed tooth on the crankshaft and I use a little socket and place it underneath the belt to wedge it in. Just don't forget to take this out or you will have some major damage. This trick is from Steve from Broken Piston Garage. Jam it in. Now my belt can't slip off. Now I tension my belt around here. And what's important now is that I rotate my pulley wheel in clockwise direction and catch that first tooth so that it has slap to go counterclockwise. I go over here and I tension it. I do the same thing here. I rotate it clockwise, catch the next available tooth, go on, and that's now inserted correctly. Now I take my pulley wheel. There we go. Put this in here. Now the belt's already somewhat in the right teeth. 24 to 26. 26 Newton meters. I don't want to overdo this torque because it's going in aluminum. Aluminium. We're not in America. <sighs> And now I gotta rotate it until this little nose is in this little notch visible. And then I go on here. Oh. And now I tighten this without moving it again. There's the notch. And there's this little keyway. And you can see I rotated it a little too far so the belt tension is a little higher than it's supposed to be. But as long as I can see that notch, it's with intolerance. Now, what I gotta make sure before I tighten now the camshaft pulley wheel bolts is that this pin is loose. See how nicely loose this is? And this pin. If this pin would be now locked, the crankshaft pulley wheels would not be in the right spots. Rainer is counteracting my torque here, and I'm using 26 Newton meter. That's and that's like nothing. So you stop. Now it's important that this pin is loose, I can take it out, and this pin is loose, I can take it out. If they are stuck, it's not a good sign. And now I can take my crankshaft tool off, and I can take the lock pin back out, raise the car back up, put the starter motor back in. Oh my god. Cool. 80 Newton meter for the cooling fan spindle. Good. This cap gotta be loose now. Is it loose? Yes, it's loose. Hear that? If it is stuck, the crankshaft would have moved and then the timing could be off. The yes. pin is still on, it did not break off, so we did not apply excessive torque. So you it did your go job good. You want to make sure you're not dropping the cap inside, okay? Oh it's Rainer's car. Starter motor yeah. power cable. Power cable, oh yeah. And it only gets 10 Newton meters, okay? 47 Newton meter on this one. Oh my god. It's not an oh my god bolt. And then installing that starter motor was the easiest job in the world. I'm putting back the alternator, the alternator mounting bracket. So we are still working okay. on the alternator bracket. Yeah, and the audience missed everything because... I didn't press a button. Alternator bracket has five bolts and we got four tightened. The fifth one is optional, okay? <laughs> Vera got replaced here by Martin. He is now a Black Forest candlelight holder. Here, Rainer is a little bit worried that he bought himself a Discovery 4 and not a Discovery 3. Yeah, it's and a quarter past dark. The timing cover now back in. So say it. <laughs> I forgot to take my... 
Steve Piston Broke Garage not below the timing belt out. And that's why this cover doesn't fit on correctly. Yeah, and that's who's me. hard about it? Me. I don't know. Damn, that was a close call. <laughs> That's why the timing cover didn't go off. So Steve has to be all proud of me now. <laughs> Damn. 10 Newton meters. So we're gonna loosen the oil filter two turns and let it drain. So we're looking down into the oil filter housing. As soon as I take the oil filter out, this little valve opens and the oil drains. So I gotta hold this now closed with one hand. Then I got a magnet here attached to the check valve. See, here's my magnet. That magnet allows me to grab that check valve here and lift it up quite a bit, like five millimeter, quarter of an inch. A hundred milliliter of oil into the outside there. Remember to hold the drain valve closed with one hand. And now I got to lift the check valve up carefully. And now I got to wait for this oil to rinse back through the check valve into the engine block down to the pump. That takes about five minutes and I gotta hold it like this. So now I'm cranking now the engine backwards. That's why I need to have it in neutral. It's sitting on its wheels now. That this will suck in the oil, which sunk down over the pump, bring it through the gear and prime the oil pump properly. Okay, so I'm gonna do at least three or four revolutions. Well, that's it, which means on a Discovery 4, we did not manage to get this done in one day. So it's day two on Rainer's oil pump change on his Discovery 4 with 177,000 kilometers. Christian is hard at work. So installing the alternator again. Serpentine belt tensioner. 45 Newton meter. Crankshaft pulley wheel. Oh, gotta mount it the right way. Oh my god. 16 Newton meters. That's about two and a half clickety clicks. But you're gonna torque them. No. What? I was thinking two and a half clickety clicks is that accurate. <laughs> yeah. Water pump pulley wheel. It gets the same clickety clicks. Oh, the serpentine pulley wheel. Some torque. Okay. So mounting a senseless bracket to hold some stuff. Exactly. What a very accurate description. Now, when I took the fan shroud out, I did not disconnect the coolant pipes here at the quick disconnect couplings. It was too difficult. I disconnected up here the hoses inside the car. I will now install this aluminum distributor right here. Bring a new to him tool which he has owned for 10 years. And I never used it because I didn't know I own it. It actually works. Yeah. So I missed the serpentine belt. Yeah, which is not the end of the world. I can't believe we are putting back that thing already. We just have to find three more centimeters. <laughs> All there. Moved the cooling fan shroud on this one according to the Discovery 4 workshop manual for the TDV6 3 liter. That worked perfectly. It told us where every bolt is and which coolant line had to be disconnected. What we're gonna do now when we got it back in is we're gonna follow this in reversal order. This way we capture every coolant line what we took off and so on. So I'm using this tool again, which is uh, really good that Vera found this, <laughs> which I didn't know I had it for 10 years. So see, I can maneuver a hose clamp into any position. I can unlatch the tool. There. And there it is. The tool will from now on live up here and not down there in the dungeon. This tool is made in such a way that you can actually pivot the hose clamp in any position. Ah. Place it. Open the latch. Done. I opted to take a picture before we took it That's apart. A, Christian declined. What a, what a useless <laughs> step taking a picture. So we're getting really close here. Click, click. Your fan goes back in place. Still a rag which we are not allowed to forget. There are hardly any parts left. The oil cooler finally gets mounted. It's unbelievable. I think we put it back together. Well, Christian did. So putting back the cover plates. Well, now we're gonna fill in the coolant. 
and see if we have any leaks. Oh, I'm looking for leaks. Yeah, <laughs> looks dry so far. The battery after a major repair. It's always exciting. So he's going to start the engine and we'll see. After just about eight seconds, six to eight seconds, it should have oil pressure. It's all drained. Oh my God. Four seconds. Oh my God. And then it starts and all the worries are gone. One and a half days we worked on that car. On the oil pump on a Land Rover Discovery 4. So everything is finished down here. Ready to take it on a test drive. Supercharger bypass valve control circuit open. Sounds like we didn't connect the connector. The gap tool is reading an error because a connector, apparently from the bypass valve. And it's not plugged in. God damn it. <laughs> so I put it on and didn't push it down like the guy who assembled this oil level sensor on our last mod crawler. Oh my. So we are going on a test drive. We got 75 degrees of oil temperature. By the time we are up on the hill, we're gonna have like 80 maybe. And we got here now 98 degrees of oil temperature. 0 0.65, not much more. It was a very hot car. With the car at full temperature, you all saw it was far above 90 degrees. The pressure is below spec. Now we're gonna coast back home, the hill down, and we check in our driveway and see what it's there. Running up a mountain is getting the temperature harder than driving around on regular roads. Above 100 degrees now when we did this measurement and let's see what it is in my driveway. Instant. Instant. Instant pressure. The pressure is not quite where I would like to see it. The engine is now hot. You can see it's still 102. So three and a half thousand RPM. This is now the idle pressure with the engine oil at 90 degrees. So this is about 0 0.75. On a Discovery 4, the spec is 0 0.5 to 1 bar at idle. So we are in spec slightly better than with the old pump. We are just in spec at 3,500. We got 1.9, so that's fine. We're finished with this job. We got the new oil pump in. It's within specification now. It was not within specification before. It's now 1.9, which is supposed to be at 3,500, and it's 0 0.75 at idle when the engine has normal oil temperature, like 90 degrees. It is definitely noticeable that this is not a new engine anymore. And I think one of the problems with the Discovery 4s is that they do not get new oil pumps. The Discovery 3s do, People changed them over the years and on force nobody touches the oil pump because it's such a big job on them. In my opinion, these engines suffer then from low oil pressure and that can cause problems at high mileage. I'm not claiming that this is causing a crankshaft crack or a crankshaft failure, but if there is a bearing failure, it sure goes back to oil pressure. Yes, and that engine's going to run for a long time because we interfered just in time. That's it for this week's video. This was a complicated repair. It's not quite step-by-step -step for a Discovery 4 oil pump change, but you can see what a struggle it is and how we approached it, what we took out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That's really important. Think about subscribing and in any case, don't unsubscribe. And we want to thank our patrons for their continuous support. Rainer is a patron also. Yes, oh, yes. Rainer is a patron also. <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Rainer. Yes. And we'll see you next Sunday.